Hello, today we're going to be looking at a device that I've just recently purchased, which is the DE10 Nano. It's an FPGA, and if you don't know what that means, it's a field programmable gate array. Okay, um, still don't know what it means? Well, basically it's a chip that allows us to simulate hardware, so you can program it in a way so that it simulates a system. It goes down to the point of, of, of programming basic logic really um, but in vast quantities so uh, this system will allow me to play Amiga, Commodore 64, uh, Amstrad loads of different systems and they are what are called cores and this is all part of what's called the Mister project uh, there was a device previously out called the Mist, uh, which was quite popular but um, it's since like died off a bit now and these boards are becoming more and more popular they're cheaper um, to purchase and I'm going to be going through how I'm setting one of these up and just showing a quick demo of it and hopefully I'll do some more f videos of these in the future so owning several real Amigas why have I purchased this well, I see this as a good way of experimenting with other systems other than Amiga. It, it does Commodore 64, Amstrad, BBC, loads of arcade ports as well, and they're what are known as cores. Um, now, granted, you'd say, why don't you just use emulation? That's going to be free and cheap and easy to set up. Granted, yes, that's a good, good way to go about it as well, but uh, this way also uh, is, is good for accuracy because you're actually simulating the hardware whereas emulation there's always a point of it not being 100% accurate so that's why I've gone with this solution so the first part you need obviously is the DE10 Nano and I purchased this from a electronics retailer here in the UK uh, and it was about £99 an additional requirement is an SD RAM module which uh, can be purchased from the Atari forums by several people. Uh, I got this from a chap in Germany and it was roughly 20 euros. From the same supplier as well is this additional board as well which is an IO board. It enables you to have VGA and um, audio out as well this isn't a requirement this is optional and this did cost me an additional 50 or 60 euros as well which could be quite expensive so with it all fitted together it should look something like this uh, there is an SD micro SD card as well that was provided with mine and that's an 8 gig card and the next step we're going to look at is setting up that SD card next with the Mr. system So the first thing to do is to insert the SD card into your PC and then to Google Mr. Wiki um, and hopefully you should get onto this page. So this is a good website to go to for the basic setup and everything. Um, it mentions about the different board and all the details about it. It also has links to all the cores as well. So next we go to the setup guide on the right hand side and this walks you through on basically you need Windows, you need an internet connection, you need an SD card reader which we have already and we have the card inserted into there. So you need to download a program uh, to set up the SD card. The link is here and you're basically looking for the latest release. You may find when you go to run the program that Windows says, oh, I need to protect you. Um, it's fine to go ahead with this. I think it's just a case of the executable isn't signed. So this is the main program and it should then recognize your SD card and give a disk number. So in this case, it's disk six and you should be able to tell roughly the size of the SD card that you've got the correct one. Uh, in this case, the card's already set up, so the option for full uh, install is blanked out and the only option is to wipe. After the full install is complete, you should find that the card 
uh, has Mr. Data as the name and you should see a Mr. File on there as well in the root. Um, now that is going to need updating so if we go back to the wiki um, then we go to uh, we're looking for main Mr. That's like the main firmware. Uh, go to releases and then scroll down to the bottom we're looking for the latest one so it's only like a couple of days old and we download that one and then rename it to Mr. Uh, so that's all up to date then. Uh, and then we've got other cores so let's let me show you how you download a core because we've already got some on here on the card already so we go back uh, to the main site go back to the wiki that's the best place and then scroll down and then on the right hand side you'll see all of these cores here so if you go into one like the Commodore 64 you've got a releases folder all these are similar and then you just download the latest release uh, you download that file and put it into the root of your SD card and that's pretty much it um, now there are other systems like uh, the uh, the Amiga one has um, extra files that it needs for example it needs the kick ROMs uh, in there as well um, and the Amstrad also needs a uh, ROM file as well so with all that set up let's uh, take out the card now and put it back into our mister and uh, fire it up Okay, so we're going to go over how uh, we set up the Mr. board. Um, generally, this area I use for my Amiga. So normally, my Amiga sits here. Hence, why you're seeing an Amiga power supply and various cables that are Amiga related. I've got a nice set of Logitech speakers here and a uh, nice 15 kilohertz monitor. This really helps with this situation because uh, the default output of this Mr. Box via VGA is 15 kilohertz. But don't worry because in the configs there is a way of enabling uh, a scan doubler uh, which user would have used in the Amiga days in order for 31 kilohertz or box standard monitors of today to be used. Um, so let's plug it in. So basically we've got VGA, so let's plug that in first. Um, we've then got uh, next the audio for our Logitech speakers. Let's plug that in. And next, let's then plug in. It doesn't notably have USB ports on here at all, so you need one of these, which is uh, on the go USB hub. Uh, so there's four ports on here, basically, goes from a small connector to uh, four large standard port USB ports so we'll plug that in the side there we can start bringing things such as a keyboard over um, and then we plug that into our hub and also uh, things like a controller so I've got an 8-bit do gamepad controller which works really well with this so we'll plug that in as well and the final bit then is just to power the device on. So, power it on, should see nice pretty lights and something should display on the screen. So let me uh, change the angle of the camera so you can better see uh, what I'm seeing. So this is the first menu that uh, you see. These are all the ROMs that we installed earlier on. Um, and can go up and down with the arrows to select which one we want to start with. So I'm going to start with C64 and we just press enter and then uh, in a couple of seconds there we go we've got a Commodore 64 all loaded. If I press F12 uh, I get a menu pop up so I can do a couple of things. I can load a uh, PRG file which is uh, a program. Uh, if I've got a cart file I can load that up but uh, in this instance I've got a D64 image which is quite common on all the ROM websites. If I load that up I've got one game called Rodland which is uh, being played at the moment in the Lemon 64 competition. Um, and all I need to do is press enter and then that is then loaded into the drive. But of course we've got a real Commodore 64 here. And we'll, we'll 
purposes, we actually need to load uh, the game the old fashioned way. So we're typing load, uh, comma, uh, star, uh, comma, dash, eight, dash, one, and press enter. And of course, um, it is as fast as a Commodore 64 and a, a disk as well, so uh, we're going to wait quite some time for it to load. OK, so it's shown ready, so all I need to do is type the word word run and press enter, and this should then load the game. OK, track draw, just press space to get past that. Then, like most of them, they ask, do you want to cheat? Uh, no, thank you, and no to that. And then, there we go, we've got the game. There we go, loaded up. So, if I press a button, yeah, it's working. Right, and let's have a quick play. Extra game. And you've got to be able to get one letter this time round. Okay, and on to the next level. As you can see, the image quality is really good. Ho hopefully, you can see the image quality in in this. Oh, damn it! It's because I was talking. And just to prove, yeah, we are still playing on that device just there. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to show most probably some more videos of this, of different setups, uh, maybe show some Amiga. Because I've got a real Amiga, um, I don't really see this as a system that I'm going to use uh, for the Amiga. Um, it's going to be things like this for Commodore 64, uh, other 8-bit machines. I've never played um, Amstrad before so I'm going to experiment with that. So there's loads of other different systems I can use on this. Um, and yeah, so yeah, watch out for another video um, coming soon. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, yeah, see you in the next one.